Hey, kids, do you like professional wrestling? I like professional wrestling. Chris likes professional wrestling. This is Shake Them Ropes for the last week of October 2021. I am Jeff Hawkins. He is Chris Novembrino. Say hello, Chris. I'm Chris Novembrino. <laughs> I'm Iowa or I'm Idaho. <laughs> Ralph Wiggum. Uh, let's do a little housekeeping here for Shake Them Ropes. It is almost November. And I've talked to Chris about this. Uh, drop in my DMs with your opinions on this. I am thinking of leaving Voices of Wrestling. It is nothing against Voices of Wrestling. I love all these guys here. I love all the shows here. I like everybody involved with Voices of Wrestling. They've been super, super good to me. But I've also been talking to the old neighborhood with Sean Ross Sapp and doing more of a retro show over there versus what I'm doing here now. Now, we could always change this to a retro show, but you know, it's one of those things where it's like we've been here a number of years doing modern wrestling. I don't enjoy the WWE. <laughs> and that's kind of been our now forced lane, so to speak, even though, even though not really, it's really a kind of a Jeff Hawkins and Chris Novembrino type show. Um, because as rest, voices of wrestling grew, we, we, you know, we now have a specialty show looking at impact. We have a specialty show looking at AEW. And nobody else has kind of gone with WWE because it's assumed that that's our lane. And I never really wanted it to be our lane. It was just WWE was the big dog at the time. So I don't know if I want to go to Fightful and I don't know if I want to, or if I want to change it and stay here or if I want to change it. And, you know, I, I, I just don't know. So those of you listening, my DMs are open. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me what you think of the show. You know, I'll, I'll relay it all to Chris. Chris is busy. He doesn't want to be on Twitter all that much. And I understand this. It's true. Uh, I, I do <laughs> request that when you drop into Jeff's DMs, you <laughs> oh, include... Hold, hold on. <laughs> Tread very lightly here, Chris. Yeah, I, I just want them to include the Owen Hart phrase, enough is enough and it's time for a change. <laughs> I, I think ideally we would get Hawkins up to at least 10 or 15 of those in his inbox here within the next week. You know, and that'd just be the joke and nobody gives me any constructive criticism. <laughs> it would just be that. It, and... Hey, it look, that means listener engagement, buddy. No, it's just, I'm, I'm just trying to figure things out right now. I don't really know what I want to do just yet. I do miss being at Fightful on the rig, but you know, life and work happen that, but I don't necessarily want to leave voices of wrestling either. I love these guys. They've been, you know, again, this is where Rob started the show. There is some significance to that, in my opinion. So, you know, it's not a money thing. It's not a people are mistreating me type thing. It's just a, I don't know. I don't know where my brand fits anymore. And it's, it's kind of that state of, you know, I'm, I'm older, <laughs> you know, Fightful is a more youth oriented website as well, which is kind of a, you know, kind of a detriment to going there right now it, it's it's more you know do i want to continue podcasting and if so do i want to continue doing modern wrestling and the you know and i know that there are people in companies right now that listen to that for the analysis of the modern product and i don't want to tick them off as well but at the same time i you know i, I watch about 15 to 20 hours of wrestling a week and it's you know it's it, it's it gets to be a bit of a slog at times it's not that i want to quit and it's not that i'm complaining it's just do I want to change things up or shake them ropes? Yeah, I don't know about you, but there is at least every week a three to four hour window where I'm just like furiously watching wrestling or sometimes like power <laughs> power watching wrestling. You're, uh, you're cramming for the test. In, in a way, yeah. Well, okay, but like also I have learned through the years of doing this and years now of doing this that watching live is an absolute time suck when you Silly. are dealing uh, dealing with the volume yes. and I, i'm gonna go one step further especially with regards to wwe the quality yes. of the product you're dealing with here 
Um, I, for me, uh, the way I kind of get through some of this stuff on a week to week basis, and I've always been transparent on this is I always watch after the fact and I actively skip pretty much every entrance unless there's like a run. It- <laughs> no, cause if you know, I'm that- laughing, I'm laughing because I'm like, man, you're smarter than me. I just put on the TV as background noise sometimes. And I watch this. I don't watch raw live because of you, Monday night football, bro, but- the, the, the scissors, you, you, yeah. can, you can trim out a lot of fat that way. Yeah, you're just right. But- just by skipping the entrances and stuff. I mean, you know, like obviously, like you know, AEW this recaps. Week. You can cut those out. Like, you know? Oh God! And WWE loves those. So if you if you're kind of judicious and aggressive with that, you can r- get the time down on this process. Like I, I don't. I guess what I don't need in my inbox are time saving tips. I feel like I have I have the tips. If you want time saving tips, come and hit me up. Let me tell you about one point one two speed people. Um, like, like like you can you can. I actually, can't do that on my TV either that's the problem uh you can on certain websites though okay. uh yeah yeah so and and you can put those on your tv um which is what i do so like I, where i'm coming from on this has been what i feel like the shake them ropes brand is now it, it's more from being a wwe brand because it's almost impossible to talk about wwe in a vacuum on a weekly basis uh, unless you were just going to do a straight objective show review blow by blow, which Jeff and I have like zero interest at all in doing. True. So in that case, we're talking about specifically WWE's role in the broader wrestling ecosystem, which now includes a major competitor in AEW. And so what the show sort of has necessitated is a cross comparative analysis wherein you have to watch both AEW and WWE and think about one in the context of the other and the other in the context of the other and also keep the storyline straight and also like and for me on a week in week out basis I and I guess I'll be sort of deliberately ambiguous about what I'm talking about when I say rewarding here I have not found the process of doing the work and it is work of watching all this WWE um every week comparing it to AEW to be a a rewarding process um and, and and I would I would rather be able to watch in a vacuum nxt uk which i unironically like i i, I mean i don't know i, I i've always I been like, like it it's gotten on my nerves the last it, couple of weeks gotta well, yeah it, look uh, i mean it, it has its peaks and valleys and it might be in a valley and it might die tomorrow we always know this <laughs> we always know this about nxt uk or like it dynamite or rampage as well i love rampage i uh-huh. really really enjoy rampage um so like i want to be able to sort of like watch those um but if we start doing a review of Dynamite and Rampage, Voices already has that on the network. I, I mean, I, I guess, I guess you could say I offer something different in the realm of commentary on AEW. But I don't, I don't know that that's enough of. We a do review. the Lazy River. We hit everything. WWE. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so, uh, and so, like, that's where I've been coming from. Like, look, if there, if there's a market for us to keep doing what we're doing, like, I'm down to do it. But. If not, or I can you know, talk Vader Sting from 1992. <laughs> right, and we can do that here. We can do that there. You know, we can do that in a box with a fox. Uh, we can have our green eggs and ham, Jeff. <laughs> it's all about drugs, Chris. <laughs> Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> hey, what, well, we yeah, are what, starting with some non WWE news today. Big news, in my opinion, on the American wrestling scene. The future of Ring of Honor, reading here from the Wrestling Observer, is in jeopardy, and the company as we know it will be basically gone when the decision was made to no longer offer talent contracts and not promote any shows from the final battle show on December 11th until April of 2022. Joe Coff informed talent on October 27th that everyone is being released from contracts at the end of the year, but that effective immediately, all talent can start working for other promotions, even if under contract previously top ring of honor talent were exclusive to ring of honor in the united states on ontario markets but they could work on off dates anywhere else in the world sign that things were changing was noted when ring of honor gave mark and jay briscoe the okay to work for gcw in los angeles where they won that group's tag team titles for mance warner and matthew justice now also kind of interesting in here i I, you know let, let, let no let's just stop there i'm 
you never want to see people lose their jobs. You never want to see that. I saw an interesting take, and I don't quite agree with it, was that AEW partially responsible for this. I don't know about that. It's, this is the pandemic. Ring of Honor is one of those companies that quote unquote did it right and honored all their contracts through the pandemic and kept producing and formed a bubble with testing, which cost money and things cost money. And they didn't have any live income coming in. And that's what kind of happens. And of course, they are owned by Sinclair Broadcasting, who probably didn't like the amount of money they were losing. And also of note, they've decided that the library is up for sale too. That to me indicates that they may not be coming back. Or if they're coming back, it may not even be Ring of Honor. It might be something with a new name so that all these young guys or whatever and disassociates themselves from the brand. Now, part of that talking point that actually interests me is, if you remember, the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes came to Ring of Honor to pitch the idea of a super show that later became All In. They used all of Ring of Honor's crew and production and satellite feed for All In. I'm not saying Ring of Honor picked the form of their own destructor because, you know, Impact's still around somehow. <laughs> you know, you have super indies like GCW and PWG still floating, but as a national organization, Ring of Honor just can't compete anymore in this market with now a solid number two, some say number one, wrestling entity in there. Uh, I'll, I'll pause here before I go on for uh, notes from you, Chris. Well, I think that the AEW killed Ring of Honor thought process is sort of a vicious one. Um, I, I think, you know, for I'm start, not saying it's correct. Let me No, let me, no, no, so, no. I, right. I, and I'm not I'm not like trying to start fighting with. I you mean, there's no di- there's no direct correlation. between no. Ring of Honor. I saw so I'm I would anyway. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna offer a rebuttal to like your take on that or, or or to that position then right um, which is not necessarily your take and we've clarified that and I it's not that's not your take what I'm about to rebut is not your position but okay. a position that is held um by by some um and articulated by others and so what I would say is like if, if you're thinking all out sort of started sowing the seeds for ring of honor it's impossible for ring of honor management or cody or matt jackson or any of these you know like devious deal makers to know that like in a couple of years there would be sort of an economic desert that would happen in the form of the recession well Um, let me let me pause you there real quick okay absolutely before tony khan really came along to form this aew thing because i don't believe he was a part of the all-in stuff that was all Cody and the Bucks. And then they saw it could work and they found Khan who said, I'll bankroll this and then we'll become AEW. I believe that Rhodes and Bucks were offering a deal where they come in and they get to be management of Ring of Honor and get to run it, which eventually, oddly enough, a few years later, uh, what happened was they, that's, that's how Ring of Honor kind of got Marty Skrull involved in, in trying to run the thing. And we know how that ended up. Now, I don't think Ring of Honor, had they said yes to Cody, the Bucks, and then maybe later Omega. I don't even know if Omega comes if if they take over Ring of Honor. I don't think they have the cash influx slash creative influx that they did when they hooked up with Tony Khan and became AEW. I don't think they push Ring of Honor to another level. I think it would have been fun to think about. I think they would have gained some traction, definitely, but I don't think they get to this level if they had just hooked up and basically taken over a piece of ring of honor. Okay. I agree. That was not where I was going. I know. I know. I just wanted to add that as kind of context because Tony, Tony Khan came in a little bit later. Sure. Um, all right. I want to make sure that I held on to my thought here. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Um, so what I was trying to say is that, looking at all in and yes doing sort of like a collabo joint 
with the Bucks and Cody and all of that. One, I I do agree that it yes, it, if if the Jacksons and Cody had joined Ring of Honor, it's not like Ring of Honor becomes AEW. I don't think that logically follows. Um, I think you actually need Tony Khan, the specific disposition of Tony Khan, a guy who's willing to lose money, who's a little bit of a money mark, who's willing to throw down the money in the contracts and that sort of thing. Um, and you didn't have that at Ring of Honor. So that's a wrong way of thinking about it for starters. Where I was going is that you have the economic desert that is COVID-19. And yes. there's no way of knowing when you're talking about doing all out. Uh, well, if we don't do this, we might <laughs> actually sabotage the Jacksons and Omega and, and Rhodes from getting their little fledgling project off the ground here. If we basically stop them from doing all out, yeah. um, they can't do it. That, that will stop AEW and they'll never be able to launch it because this pandemic's going to sweep the planet. Um, like if you somehow knew the future, then I guess that would be a logical chain. But that's not that's not what happened here. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's my other thought. Uh, it, it, I think that ring of honor, like the, the whole AEW did ring of honor in sort of thing is, is sort of a manifestation of a broader trend in a way of like people looking for externalities when there's internalities, like there are internal yeah. reasons why ring of honor failed. And it has to do, it begins and ends with ring of honor and ring of honor was never destined to be any bigger than what they were. Um, I, I, I'm aware that they've been having or have had some good shows over the last few years here, but like, you know, it's kind of like they were having good shows, like the way that TNA back in like the mid 2010s would occasionally wing off a good show or like a, a couple of good shows here and there. Um, it didn't mean anything. It was just, I was know. more aware of where ring of honor was broadcast when I got direct TV and they were on the channel now known as access. I think it was called uh, HD net at the time. I got than I am now. And I know LA has a Sinclair broadcasting station. I couldn't tell you what time Ring of Honor plays in my area. So, I mean, that's the other thing. Like, how does AEW get off the blocks and start competing against WWE with with these like horrible contracts? I mean, it's not like, remember, like some of the weird like places that TNA uh, before they were impact ended up on, like when they were on like, like the phone book channel. Yeah, oh, like yeah, the TV yeah, guy yeah, channel. TV, TV guy channel. There. Yeah, right. Uh, it's all, it? almost the phone book channel. It went from Spike to TV guy channel to my what was it, my something. I, I forget the name of it, but yeah. Was they, it? They just, were they? Were they weren't on me TV? Were they? No, oh. I don't think so. But yeah, I, I understand your point. Yeah, yeah. No, so like how do you build an an internetwork competitor but for the contract with TNT? Um a, 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 I mean, this kind of gets back to the idea of what is the magic sauce in AEW. It's a lot of things. It's like it is Tony Khan, it's obviously the Bucks and Omega and all those guys too. Um but it's also Danielson, and it's also Punk, and it's it's like there's there's just a lot of varying factors here and it's hard to imagine all those things coalescing around the orbit of Ring of Honor. And here's the other thing that's really big, and even AEW sometimes suffers from this. When you're in this market and when wrestling is synonymous with WWE, you have to have some sort of, I, I don't know, what, what is ROH's brand? They don't have a brand, really. They're, they're, they're another wrestling company with guys that nobody really knows for the most part, except maybe the Briscoes who have been around long enough to get some hype. Maybe people know Mike Bennett from WWE, but they really, they're, they're another wrestling company putting on wrestling shows. I also think that ring of honors sort of like peak was when new Japan as a U.S. potential yeah. expansion w was going to happen. That was sort of like what there, that was really their ceiling. It wasn't going up from there and it didn't really go up from there. So you they know. were a group that needed a dance partner and then they never wanted to give anything to the dance partner. That's what I always remember, but we'll see. They say they're coming back. I have my doubts. Now as to that roster, there's only two, two acts. I could see getting signed by either of the quote unquote big two. And that's Brody King, who is definitely going to be signed by AEW to be part of the house of black without Malachi black. Those two guys love each other. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're a tag team in PWG. They're basically the same person when you watch them sometimes. Um, 
<laughs> but I, I could see that. And I think the Briscoes are going to end up in one of the big two. Don't know where WWE passed on them years ago because they weren't cosmetically pleasing, but you know what? They're interesting. I'd love to see them in AEW because they're dying because the FTR is asking for a program with them. And you know, that's going to be my jam. I would love to see them unleashed a bit in AEW cutting promos and just how big they get there. But as for everybody else, I, I just don't know. There's going to be some people impact like Jay lethal could probably go back to impact. You know, Jonathan Gresham's going to end up there in new Japan for the super juniors, I think, but we are now at a point where we have a, we have a supply uh, imbalance in available wrestlers in terms of names with all the cuts WWE has had. And there's nobody that really, really where you go, I have to have that person right now. Well, I, I mean, that's essentially these people getting released from AEW. The real question is like, will essentially will or, or from i'm sorry not be, getting released from aew for right. ring of honor the question is will aew pick me up because I, I think with all the cost cutting measures that wwe has gone through and also the way they've re-sculpted their developmental system if they wanted you they'd want you like you know yes. i like jay if I, I like jay lethal but like th there's i i would put at like a zero percent chance uh, wwe is one of those things where they they previously look at jay lethal because he's entertaining like come and do some, you know, some impressions. He, they'd love to have black machismo on the main roster, I think. But at the same time, they have now a double-edged sword with NXT 2.0 because they want guys nobody's ever heard of, but they also don't want guys who have any experience either. So, so if you're a young guy in, in the ring of honor system and you're like, well, maybe I could hook up at the PC. It's like, well, no, you've been working these other things and we just want guys who will work the quote unquote wwe style yeah i so i it's it's just hard to see where some of these talents fit yeah, in yeah, yeah it really is uh speaking of wwe they've announced most of their pay-per-view dates for 2022 with a number of interesting notes that's dave not me talking as we mentioned a few weeks back wrestlemania is now officially a two-day event running on april 2nd and april 3rd at at&t stadium in dallas not going tickets for wrestlemania go on sale november 12th to the public through seat geek and as noted they did announce combo tickets for both nights <laughs> they're gonna get creamed on saturday that's jeff's note the first note night will go head to head with the ncaa basketball final four <laughs> it's usually on that weekend wrestlemania has always been and it's kind of been fun and I remember I was originally, you know, the first year I was in Dallas, like, I may have to travel to Houston because Virginia may make the final four and then they get beat, which sucks. So they're always on that Monday night. Uh, the championship is always on that Monday night. Saturday would be, they'd be head to head against the NXT uh, time, but they've announced their, um, they've announced their pay-per-view schedule. Of course, one on January 1st, going head to head with a lot of college foosball, um, especially the uh, national title tournament in there. They have a pay-per-view for Labor Day weekend when AEW traditionally runs as well. So that's going to be interesting. Right now they have open dates in February and October that they are looking to fill. Jeff jumped the gun thinking it was smart that they didn't have February day and they weren't going to run anything between Rumble and Mania. But no, they're going to run something. Those two dates might be reserved for Saudi Arabia. Don't know yet. I would assume the February date is going to be an elimination chamber. No, you're something. totally right. I, I bet you at least one of those is Saudi Arabia. It might be October. It's not probably going to be October, but I don't know. They might do two. No, the right. Like I could totally see them doing March before WrestleMania to make them, you know, like, oh, it's the you're on, you're getting an event that's on the road to WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight, WrestleMania. It's a good idea in theory. I could not sit through two five hour pay per views, though. That's the thing is we all know one four hour show would be great, but your choices now are either two five hour shows or one seven hour show. And you're just like, I mean, I get the people who travel want to do this. I'm a little older. I don't. I, I got to tell you, the entrance and exit from the stadium and stuff too was an absolute slog. Nice. Uh, I, I, Bill of water all over myself. As exhausting just... as it was going in night one, going home, 
sleeping, napping up, and getting yes. ready to do it all over again the next night. Like if if night one sucked for whatever reason, like I, I don't know, like you, you, I mean, I I didn't love Roman and Triple H. Let's say, uh, like I couldn't imagine going back. That's I mean, I would because I paid a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars for a ticket. That's the other back. thing. It's very expensive for a product it, that you don't that you're kind of cold on a little bit. That's, I, I, that's the I, I mean, we were going to talk about this a little later on this show. But when, I, when I'm watching AEW uh, as just a ticket purchaser consumer, not as a consumer of wrestling, but someone who would buy tickets for an event. It's sort of a no contest right now. Which of these two shows you'd want to gamble with your money on going and seeing? Like, do I want to pay? you know, let's say $50 or whatever the going rate is for WWE and go and see WWE, or would I want to pay probably that same amount of money or less to go and see AEW? What would be the better show? And right now it's like a no contest. You know what the better show is. And there's a little bit, I mean, like when I was traveling for these shows, like the last time I was in Dallas, you had all the indie shows. You had NXT TakeOver, which was a hot ticket at that time. If you'll recall, that was the uh, Sami Zayn, Shinsuke Nakamura, Finn Balor, Samoa Joe won. You had Mania. Then you had Raw and SmackDown tapings at the American Airlines Arena. Now, and you have to imagine that's going to change now because of oh, AEW. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, like I mean, there's going to be sort of a guys like we're not going to run satellite shows during WrestleMania weekend to try to help their business. Which in any WWE way. never wanted, anyways. They never mm -hmm. wanted those indie shows running satellite shows taken away from their attention. And now they're going to get that. And now it's just going to be the two nights of WrestleMania and maybe Raw. And if you can survive all that, but you know, for me, for us guys like us who liked NXT, where's the excitement? Cause the excitement of going to like raw and SmackDown, even though that was still a slog doing the four night thing with NXT mania raw. And when they did SmackDown on Tuesdays was all right, who's getting the call, you know, who's going to be, it was really quite the season premiere. It's like, okay, who's going to be debuted? Who are they moving up? What new exciting programs are they going to have? And for me, there's, there's none of that. And also like, how do you buy tickets now this far out? Not knowing what the, what, who's going to be on what card. I, I mean, th this is a thing that I really do think WWE shoots themselves in the foot with when it comes to not doing long-term storytelling, right? It's not just like Chris is a lover of, you know, serialized uh, sci-fi and that sort of thing. It's like, if you have a storyline going between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker, let's say, and it starts in August, there was a point in time with this company where I knew that at WrestleMania, it was very likely that I was going to see Shawn Michael versus The Undertaker in the main event. I'm just making a hypothetical angle here. And you could, you could have a pretty firm sense of that maybe no later than December uh, at the absolute latest, like I guess January, you know, like if you need to see what's going to happen to Rumble, like you knew what the storyline was going to be. In a lot of cases, there was some pretty strong foreshadowing, you know. Um, n now, you know Roman Reigns is going to be in the main event, but like, I don't know, I guess it could be Lesnar. We might be building. No, a night one, you might get, you know, the Bianca. I mean, I remember night one this time was like Bianca Sasha which is a good match. I mean, it's probably going to be the women's title match. It's probably, you know what? It's probably going to be Charlotte and uh, Becky or Sasha and Becky. I, that, well, there's a fresh pairing. <laughs> Should yeah. be Bailey's time to shine. No. Uh, yeah, no. Sorry, um, I, I didn't mean to, to have my attention drawn, but it's for this next, uh, next news item. Greg Hamilton released from the WWE, the ring announcer of SmackDown. I was looking up who ring announced tonight because I could not remember. It turns out it was Mike Rome, the announcer for Raw, did double duty tonight. Uh, Greg released a statement saying it was mutual. We'll see. Uh, Greg. Uh, Greg. I, I, I have done that with a number of girlfriends, and people <laughs> always question me. But, like, the statement speaks for itself, people. Did you wish the did you wish the girl the best in their future endeavors? Yes, we <laughs> actually we mutually agreed to not have me speak to them ever again and not see each other and please stop. Uh we won't go into speculation, but uh, there there was some stuff on social media both in his personal life and 
uh, going after a rapper professionally might have led to it. Don't know the real reason. Just he's gone. If you're a fan of Greg Hamilton, great. I, I don't know. I mean, I, his voice could be, he's a, he's a very good ring announcer. Let's put it that way. He is a very good ring announcer. You know, it's one of those jobs. It's like actually a hard job to do and no one gives you credit if you do it well. And if you latch on somewhere, you can do it forever. If you have a good enough voice and you maintain a good relationship with, whoever you're working for. Like if he gets, if he hooks up with an arena somewhere, he's going to be fine. That's, that's the, and that's the hard part is these, there are so few of those types of jobs, you know, where you're basically the crowd hype man. Uh, also impact held what was its traditional biggest show of the year bound for glory from Sam's town in lovely Las Vegas, Nevada show drew about sell out of 900 fans. Why are we talking about this? Number one, stateside. Number two, your new women's tag knockouts champions in, in, in Impact, the inspiration, Cassie Lee and Jessica McKay, a.k.a. the former Iconics. They, uh, they have uh, not improved in the ring. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Uh, also, Christian Cage dropping the title to Josh Alexander. And after all that, after the great hype packages for the coronation of Josh Alexander, Josh Alexander held this title for about 30 seconds because Moose came out and took the title from him. So your new impact champion is now Moose rumors that this is the end of the story between impact and AEW with cage dropping the title at bound for glory what was the plan since the spring, the door is open to do more, but nothing is planned for the short term, according to one person at Impact, who is probably Don Callis or Scott Demore himself. Any thoughts on this? TNA, TNA, TNA. They're no longer TNA. They are Impact. No, I'm just I'm giving them the appropriate cheer for this type <laughs> of finish, where you put the belt <laughs> briefly on a guy who's on a storyline, and then pull the rug out on it, and then like ask the audience to still care at the end of all of this. Mike Johnson also has blocked your boy. <laughs> In addition to now this week, Adam Pierce and uh, Mike Bennett reported that. <laughs> I like to call him Scrap Daddy, Jeff. Scrap Daddy, yes. Scrap, Scrap Daddy. Daddy AP, yes. Mike Johnson reporting out of uh, PW Insider uh, that of the undrafted talent, Asuka is to remain on Raw when she returns. Come back soon. Elias will remain on Raw and the Lucha House Party on Raw. Reported that Brock Lesnar will be on SmackDown, although the storyline was that he can appear on either brand whenever he wants. But obviously, with a program with Reigns for the next several months, he mostly will be on SmackDown. There is said to be no decision on Aunt Pam, aka Bailey, Eva Marie, or Lacey Evans. Come back soon, Eva. Oh my God. And finally, to round out the news section, James Yoon, formerly known as Jimmy Wang Yang. Started as a producer on Raw this week. Good for him. Good for him. Do you uh, think that Vince knows that he used to work for the company? <laughs> doubt it. Doubt it. Uh, you know, like I've always found that guy to, like actually be like a pretty like kind of clever dude for yes. finding a way through his business, yeah, yes. through the business and stuff. Like I, I actually I have I have respect for his hustle. I had respect. No, that was Yoshi Tatsu. I was about to say something. Just makes me mad. Uh, okay, that will end out the news section. Let me thank our sponsor for the, this week, my bookie. What is a lock in sports betting? A lock is simply put, a bet you can't lose. And with my bookie, you can't lose on their NBA lock of the season. Place a bet on either team to score between the Dallas Mavericks and the Denver Nuggets, which is currently on. And when the first bucket hits, you win. Let me put it like this. An NBA game has never gone scoreless. So you know this is a lock. Feels like they may go scoreless sometimes, but it's never gone scoreless. Doesn't get any easier. With superstars like Jokic and Doncic going head-to-head -head this Friday night, it won't take more than a minute of game time before your bet cashes. And that's not all. Get paid Friday, wake up Saturday, and throw down on UFC 267. Saturday night, my bookie is giving all users a $100 risk-free wager on the light heavyweight championship main event fight. You bet against Glover to share. I'm telling you that right now. So don't wait. Head to mybookie.com and use my promo code. Actually, our promo code. Chris is a nice. <laughs> ropes, R-O-P-E-S. And my bookie will instantly double your first deposit. That's promo code ropes. So you can double your funds to double your winnings. 
bet anything, anytime, anywhere, but you should bet against Glover Teixeira, who's 42 and slows up with my bookie. And we thank my bookie for their sponsorship. I've been over here thinking about a scoreless NBA game in the fourth quarter with like Luka Doncic at the line and, and it, for the 24th time. And he's gone 0 for 24 and commentary is like, wow, here he is again, folks. Luka Doncic going for number 25. I mean, I mean the thought of it boggles the mind because that would mean they'd play defense in the NBA. But let mm. me let me hold let me hold for trolling. Trolling, mm. trolling, trolling. I am I I like I'm not following <laughs> the sport that close. But my understanding is they changed the rules a little bit to favor <laughs> defense. A bit. Like like you can't do the Harden uh, BS thing that he used to do where he just like flared his leg out to get three yeah. calls. Yeah. yeah, like that. They changed some of those rules this year. That's true. No, I'm I'm hard on the NBA, but uh, I like to troll certain people by saying there's no defense in there. And now, ladies and gentlemen trademarked for your pleasure the lazy river of wrestling criticism is now open for business what is this you ask maybe you've never listened to shake them ropes before maybe you never will again but on the other hand let's talk about it the lazy river of wrestling criticism is any anything that chris and i have watched and we want to talk about we're going to talk about here much like a lazy river don't know what a lazy river is go to a water park it's that thing that floats around the park with inner tubes on it that children run around in and people end up you know almost drowning in if it has a strong enough current but nevertheless and, and just like a lazy river <laughs> this it, part of the show is way better if you've had a few whiskeys <laughs> i wish i had had a few whiskeys uh let me can i start today by all means sir i put out a statement on wednesday night that i thought that this this dynamite that they put out there might have been in terms of pacing and structure and balance and talent might have been their best episode. I adored this episode of dynamite. I love from the beginning with punk and, um, and Bobby fish, even though I thought you could have used a couple of promos there, they did them on the internet, which doesn't count. I want to see these things on TV, quite frankly. I know a lot of people didn't like that Halloween match, including my partner over on Fight Game Media. Did not like the dress-up costume match. I, look, I view the elite as kind of a goofball heel team, not a serious heel team that, you know, the horsemen would never come out in, in Halloween costumes. I get that. The elite would, because we don't, I don't take Kenny Omega that seriously as a champion either. So I was fine with this called the reveal last week. I thought it'd be Daniel Bryan originally, but instead it's Hangman Page as the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Very good staging, I thought. I thought that was great. The balance of promos here was fantastic. The Hikaru Shida versus Serena Deeb match was very, very good. Very good here. Um, all the promos I thought hit for the most part. Uh, even, even the things that didn't go perfectly, like the Sammy Guevara-Ethan Page match. I mean, Paige was there to be a base for Guevara, pretty much, and just let him do his flips. It didn't need to be a well-worked match. I adored, I adored the local competitor MJF squash to go into the uh, to go into the the promo there. Get this Boston kid in there, you know, very happy, whatever. MJF just runs in there, destroys him, and it served as a nice transition to then do the promo where he runs down the hometown crowd. I. I I just thought this thing was a breeze to watch. I couldn't believe I looked the first time I looked at my watch, we were like an hour 45 in. I could not believe it. It was a great television wrestling product, in my opinion, Chris. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I just thought it was a really, really fun show. Um, it, it, it flowed real nicely. It does. There's the thing that Dynamite does where they do get too much stuff in sometimes, um, and, and it's hard to focus in on everything. But in, in this case, like I, I have to like look at the rundown to remember everything that's on the card. Um, but all of it was enjoyable. Like there was no like, oh, I didn't enjoy that. I mean, and like the main event. Look, the the main event. I'm with you on the elite. I think it's a valid criticism of the elite that Kenny Omega sort of like oscillates 
on one hand, at least in the commentary, it's like, oh, Kenny Omega is a serious champion. But on the other hand, Kenny Omega has been working for months as a goof, flake, lightweight heel champion. Um, occasionally, he kind of like turns it up for a match or whatever. But like, you know, like the, Don the, Callis is the guy with the depth in that duo, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, like they, they they have not actually been. I don't know. They're they're goofy and flaky. Um, the Bucks like they're working like a, kind of like a water. They're not working a tight style or a vicious style right now. They're working a watered down kind of goofy. Yes. You know, smell your own fart sort of they style. Are, right they're now. working their PWG style from when they were in uh, uh, Mount Rushmore. Like, and, and I explained this, like the first five minutes of, a, of that match with them and Kevin Owens, I believe, versus uh, I forgot. It was like Ricochet and Matt Seidel and somebody else, I believe, is all they did were super kicks and suck it crotch chops it was like super kick suck it super kick suck it suck it suck it super kick and and that's all it was they're playing that same style here and if you price that in okay then you know what to expect going into this match and then you can grade on that rubric and in that case this was a nice beat in the dark order adam page story this is also a nice advancement of Omega, it, it left a feel good moment to go home on, um, which which is a great way to end this sort of like holiday theme show. The Ghostbusters thing, like it was fun. It was a solid deployment of pop culture in a way that didn't feel like on NXT, like you were just getting Chucky and the new Chucky product shoved down your throat yes. brutally. Like, uh, ha ha, I love the wheel. Cause sometimes, the devil, he makes deals, and if you had a wheel, when you're dealing with the devil, it'd be fun. Here's here's Chucky to make Rick Steiner references when we can't even call the guy Steiner. That, right. that's, yeah, but the the one criticism for me was uh, Jim Ross, <laughs> proton packs. Or he's just he's just he's complaining about the proton packs. He's complaining, oh, they're using an illegal weapon the entire time. It's like, dude, he the, the my problem was Jim Ross Jim Ross that night was on oh, he was full of himself trying to be witty and funny all night. And he was feeling himself. And so and then he just starts bitching about the proton packs in, in the ring. It's like, dude, and I will I will give this. We it's somewhat hypocritical for um, sorry. There's a loud noise. I thought it was a gunshot at first. Uh, look, this is sports entertainment. This was a sports entertainment match. This is every bit of sports as sports entertainment as the trick or street fight on SmackDown tonight. But it was better done. But No. Well, and beyond that. Okay. So here's the thing that makes it different, right? Like, yeah, it absolutely is a gimmick fight like that, but it actually advanced meaningful stuff that will have a residual effect you nailed like, it yeah. yep and, and that that's the difference it's not a nashville street fight with no consequence it is uh, page has once again thrusted himself in front of kenny omega and ruined their big moment i i thought the the part where they massacred brendan cutler was actually quite excellent like and brandon cutler for his part did a wonderful job doing the, doing the dark man slash uh, mission impossible two thing of duct taping the guy under the mask that you yeah, know it's him i thought that and was then nice. like the, the quiver I, I mean i did think that ross talking about quivering there's no quivering in wrestling was actually a funny jim <laughs> jim rossism um and uh you know i Look, uh, Serena Deeb and Hikaru Shida could have like a best of 30 for me at this point. I just, I think those two have great chemistry in the ring together. That was good. That was such a good match. That, and it yeah. didn't waste our time. And, 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 you know, it was better than the entire Queen's Crown tournament. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Uh, the, the other but thing but was, nearly, nearly twice as long. So you yes. do have to grade on that curve. <laughs> I wanted to add something else because the, the original comparison before the Trick or Street fight tonight was to uh, the Miz zombie match with with damian priest and and the difference there was it was that contrived we're supposed to take this seriously when the miz or morrison get eaten type of thing when you know that's not true blah 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 and then all of a sudden there were no but i think you nailed the better point here there's no consequences for that match miz and morrison just appeared and it's like oh yeah zombie ate me now i'm back and or 
you know, things like the Symphony of Destruction match between Elias and and either Braun or Jackson Riker. Jackson and Riker, like, Jackson, and just, the pointless. And that was actually supposed to be the blow off of that feud yeah, or so whatever. Did a yeah. rematch the next week. Da, 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 da. You know, whatever. Uh, it is your turn on the Lazy River, sir. Um, okay. Uh, I will. Let's, I guess, move over to Rampage then and let us talk uh, real quickly. As much as I enjoy Bobby Fish and uh, CM Punk, like uh, on a completely different level was Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston. Woo! Uh, just just like me. I, he, Brian Danielson, I've said this before to the ire of many, but I can't stress it enough. He just gets the best out of everybody. Whatever anyone's level is, when you're in the ring with Danielson, Danielson bumps you up like two levels. Um, like, and and Danielson's a great wrestler too, but he's he's a great wrestler who inspires other people to be great, which yes. is so unique. And like you see it time and again. Um, and you saw it I, I, again this week with Eddie Kingston, where Kingston had a dance partner who was completely willing to do everything um, and, and, and go, have the type of match that Kingston wanted to have and give Kingston the type of offense that Kingston needs to sort of like cover up what Kingston can't do. Uh, and, and just this match delivered. It delivered so hard. King Kingston never breaking character even after the match, going back and throwing a fit, which would you expect a guy like Eddie Kingston to do? And looks like we're gonna get a punk match as well, which is gonna be a lot of fun. This was pure violence. I'm gonna go backtrack real quick because I love the violence of this match, but I'm also going to uh, I'm gonna make one point and then I'm gonna bring up a point you made to me in Twitter real quick. While we're just in the AEW neighborhood, we might as well. Number one, I loved. I loved the John Moxley Preston Vance match in that tournament. It was such out of comic book fandom where it's like the, the, the villain that gets out of prison or breaks out of prison or is just reemerging that B villain, you know, in Spider-Man for me, I loved Electro in the flash. I love captain cold and he's here and he's full of himself and he's ready for a new caper and he's calling out the superhero, whatever. And this is the day that the superhero is having a bad day. Mary Jane's broken up with Peter Parker, you know, so, <laughs> somebody's fan and the hero just beats the absolute living hell out of the villain to the point where you're almost like, is he going to become a villain himself? The visual of Preston oh, Vance think, with the mask. And I the think blood. Moxley is, uh, I, who's he facing next week, Jeff? He's facing one, uh, Brian Danielson, but I think they're also playing, no, the- no, Mo- Moxley's facing Orange Cassidy. Oh, that's a tape- correct. A yes. taped up ribs, Orange Cassidy. Yes. No, no, no. I, I, I think we are going a new direction with John Moxley. Is sort of my hunch here. I think Kingston's going with him. I, I agree. No, I, I, I think, I think that this is a converging thing. They're both turning heel, and, and me- we'll see, we'll see if it sticks. And now let me bring up a quote from you this week from uh, Thursday, actually. Uh, we were talking about the, you were talking about the visual of Adam page and you said, it's just something WWE doesn't get. That's how you quote pop culture. Bad bunny was an accident an accidental Homer. Yeah. Like, look, they, they stumbled onto that bad bunny angle and it, it, it was despite themselves, but otherwise with this type of synergy with pop culture that you get from WWE is, Chucky and it, yes. it's some, it, 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 it's something that you just feel no like emotional attachment to you won't remember that Chucky was even on that NXT Halloween Havoc show next year like there's no lasting moment um and Bad Bunny as I said accidental Homer in the sense of like dude that guy really wanted to do WWE stuff like like that was the thing that was important to that dude he might have been disabused of it at the end of that run uh we'll see but like he he wanted to do that and so they got lucky because they found a guy who is like a absolute celebrity who's willing to take time out of his celebrity career to go and and frankly slum it in WWE uh, for a while to live out a childhood fantasy, uh, total accidental Homer. Um, they otherwise in WWE, like there's, they don't like to root themselves in any other culture because they view, as they like to say in their corporate meetings, they view it all as pop culture or uh, all as competitors, including sleep. 
So like you don't you don't reference sleep and you don't reference uh, the newest rock band or anything because they could listen to a rock band. They could go and see this most recent movie. Remember Guardians of the Galaxy, Jeff? Pretty big deal. Yeah. It would have been nice if WWE had had a star from that movie under contract when the movie was coming out. It would have been nice if they had done anything except going, yes, Dave Bautista is part of the number one movie oh, in America. Oh, that's right. Dave Bautista, they did, and they had no idea what to do with him. Yes, yes. They and, 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 oh, by the way, even after the fact, they still refused to embrace Guardians of the Galaxy. Exactly. Yeah, like like that. That's what I say. Like WWE can't pop culture, and like AEW will continue to run circles on that on that front. And then also in delivering a match like Danielson and Eddie Kingston, I, you know, you watch that, and there's just there's no there's no comparison, right? Correct. I mean, it it it, it was just such a fun and just looking at Danielson's chest after the match and just the visual of Kingston get throwing up the bird while he's going out like Nick Diaz in the UFC. I, or, I think it was Nate who went out like that or something to that effect. I, I can't remember, but that's just, I, I, I love, love this product so much at times. I am going to bring up now, Chris, uh, a little pop quiz for you. What makes a lazy river run? Isla Dawn. No, no, I'm not bringing up Isla Dawn. You will waste your time on that one, sir. It is the current. And in order to go on the lazy river, you have to flow with the current. You know who doesn't like floating with the current? WWE. Because guess what happened tonight on SmackDown, kids? That's right. Shotzi Blackheart is now a heel. (laughs) What? As a tank? Is a fan favorite, does the dumb wolf crap, has pretty cool merchandise, which has now been marked down to like $5 on WWE shop. And we decided to do this stupid story where because she didn't beat Charlotte, that it's now Sasha's fault. So she turns on Sasha. And I saw people praising this angle, and I especially, especially people involved with our fightful neighborhood. And I'm like, what the hell was I watching compared to what you were watching here? Because I just, I did not see this being a good or rational turn in any ways. And to me, it's much like bringing Becky back as a heel. People want to cheer Shotzi. Shotzi works as a baby face doing the high risk stuff. Why do you want to burn money when you can make money? I I don't understand this, Chris. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you brought this one up. So uh, in my power watch tonight, there was a moment of time where there was an overlap of Deeb and Hikaru Shida on my laptop screen while I also had Shotzi Blackheart and Charlotte on the TV screen. Okay. So I, I was able to, and that that's, if you want to have an interesting experience, watch women's wrestling in WWE versus women's wrestling in AEW concurrently. And, and I mean, it's just a totally different planet. Um, regarding Blackheart, uh, I think that this speaks further to the problem that the horsewomen have become. Um, beyond becoming boring, um, they also like our heat sinks. It's, You know, I talk about this with Britt Baker, too, and we'll talk about this more with Britt Baker here in a bit, I suppose, when it's my turn. But, like, um, the horsewomen, they aren't strong baby faces um, or oftentimes aren't even presented as baby faces, but they are also um, presented as heels. I will will interrupt you there. Uh, You will. Because Bailey and and Becky Lynch are fantastic baby faces at times. Baby Bailey has been. Yes, Yes, she has been. She's not now. She's not now. Right. And I'm talking about now. Oh, you're talking. Uh, Yeah, I'm talking about now. I'm not saying I'm not saying historically. I am saying that the the horsewomen that that we have been sort of getting pushed at us here recently have been um, very obnoxious baby faces or 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 have been heels that never show ass. Correct. And and you can't get one over on them. See Bianca Belair. Um, and Shotzi Blackheart is another young talent who is now, I mean, like, God help her. She should talk to Ember Moon and get some pointers, uh, and get some <laughs> advice. Um, but, like, you know, she's going up there and, and, and they're going to turn her to feud with Sasha. I don't think this gets, I don't think this gets 
Shotzi Blackheart established as some sort of monster heel. No, um, I, I don't see where the end game is there. I, even <laughs> if there was, the end game would be her as a heel beating Charlotte, and we think that that's going to happen. Hell no, it's not. It's I saw absolutely- I saw the game on Twitter where they were trying. To, you you know how we do where it's like there's a there's a leap in logic. So you're trying to make it make sense and you make sense in your head. They're like, well, she attacked a very popular person in Sasha. So this was a good heel turn. Eh, no, because no, it, it only, it's only a good heel turn at the end of the turn, like in this first feud. Yeah. Does Shotzi Blackheart, I don't know, hospitalize in storyline, Sasha Banks, and we don't see Sasha for six months and it's the no. start of a, of a new um, like Malachi Black, like Shotzi Blackheart. Right. Let's no. go, Shotzi. Let's you see. can do it, Shotzi. Let's, Let's go, Shotzi. You yeah. can do it, Shotzi. Yeah. No. Come on, Sasha. Put put a little work in there, man. I love you, but but damn, it's, uh, it's, and, he's and the most boring cheerleader I've ever heard. She's <laughs> uh, been a very boring character for a while now. Uh, like I I mean whether I mean what's great is I could critique her baby face or heel promo but here's what's great about Sasha Banks Jeff um it's basically the same thing so like let's talk about I'm the boss I'm the blueprint okay. I, I well no I I'm, I want to kind of go like line okay. by line here okay, like, go ahead. Go so ahead. like I, I'm the boss uh-huh. implies that you've been doing a lot of winning here lately and it's sort of understood that you can't you're you're a winner um and, and we kind of know that. Yeah, she's a horsewoman. Just but like the pin in the, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, right, right. And there's Charlotte, and then there's Becky, and then there's Sasha, and and Sasha and Billy sort of oscillate for who's number three. But the pole position has been and and will remain uh, Charlotte at the top, and we know this. So when when Sasha says she's the boss, she's the boss, but it's like level four, right? right like yes. you're not like you're not like on like the final level. Like she's like, middle yeah, management. Yeah, yeah you can't no, say no, that. No. Can't come out and go. I'm no. middle management. So so then like she's got she's the blueprint. She's yes. the blueprint, blueprint. Uh, of of what? Uh, like like in in what way? Like being the blueprint would mean that you've been such a dominant performer. Um, in the company for the last decade here <laughs> that now there are, there's a new generation of talent that makes you kind of old too, by the way. Uh, but there's a new generation of talent that is coming up, modeling themselves up for Sasha Banks, match style. This is not the case. Sasha Banks, match style is kind of her thing. And like, it, you, you kind of like you, you're hard pressed to come up with other wrestlers who wrestle like her, which you could say is a positive, sure. Um, but also means that like, and and I sort of mean this in a value neutral way, that you're not influential because if people don't wrestle like you, you're not influencing them. Um, like, like so, you're not the blueprint. You're the blueprint of a house that's not being built. You're the boss. <laughs> um, on the fourth level of Streets of Rage, and we're not even halfway to Mister X. Sasha Bill the Bell is fantastic. Sasha building matches and doing promos is is the same that 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 stupid laugh that she does where it's like i'm not really connected to this story (laughs) oh charlotte it's the same thing you're the queen i'm the boss you're the queen i'm the boss it's like oh my god can we can we please and charlotte you are the queen but you have to remember i'm the boss (laughs) <laughs> like, 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 like so like there's nothing to latch on to with her that's all they should say from now on when they interact i'm the queen i'm the queen i'm the queen i'm the queen i'm the boss 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 the boss i am the boss yeah and then uh just as a as a footnote before i hand it back over to you i only had one other thing for main roster stuff and that was this was followed up i believe a segment later or two segments later with mustafa ali invoking they're going to bring back the race card with him. You guys only boo me because my name is Mustafa Ali. You know what, Chris? You know what this is setting up for? This is setting up for, if only he had a stable that was looking for retribution. Right. Well, you see, here's the thing. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've been thinking about the ins and outs on this, Jeff. It's great. Um, so a lot of people would say, the the crowd is racist angle is an absolute dead end there's no clear payoff or anything to that balderdash is what i say to that balderdash pure horse hockey um it, what is going to happen here uh, you're on the right track here mustafa ali is going to speak to other disaffected wrestlers and 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 in a bane like way convince them that the the only way for them to you know do this is to get a group together 
for retribution purposes. But here's the thing that you leave off. It It's not just about getting the group together. It's about what you do with the group. And in this case, I propose they cause chaos. Are they, are they here to take over? They're, They're here to take over. take over. Or they might be there to cause chaos. And uh, hey, it might give Mia Yim something to do who has not appeared. Bring back Slapjack. <laughs> he's he's back, Chris. He's back. He's just he's just crocodile Dundee. <laughs> uh, your your move. All right. So since we were on women's wrestling, uh, we can stay there. Let's talk about Britt Baker and Abaddon. Um, I am over this Britt Baker holding pattern. I don't think the aborting the baby face turn of Britt Baker to keep her in a holding pattern as a heel is basically doing nothing for any of the people that she's going up against. You sort of see this best illustrated, and this is even before it, but like listen to the way commentary has to talk about the Thunder Rosa match. Like and like, kind of make sure to remind you that that had some weight. You, you know what it is? It's the it's the every Hispanic superstar on WWE has to invoke Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero. <laughs> it's it's just it's that thing that every time that you bring up Britt Baker, okay, talk about the Thunder Rosa match. Yeah, and, and they, they do that in this case. I'm talking about like they're doing it for like to protect Thunder Rosa, yes, yes. and and it's evidence of how like these encounters for let's say Red Velvet. Um, and now Abaddon here have no payoff. Uh, this this one I thought was particularly egregious because Abaddon should have prevailed here because it's on her turf. And then when she has the rematch against Britt Baker, then Britt Baker's yeah, yeah, Britt Baker's able to win because it's a clean match and Britt Baker cheats. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like that is how you keep Abaddon strong. I thought. Uh, th their answer was, well, no, we're keeping Abaddon strong because she came up with the thing that none of the other dopes who've been in the she ring with Britt Baker. She almost won. Look how many two Jeff, kills she got. She came up with biting the fingers. How clever. Uh, and now makes everyone else look so stupid when they don't bite Britt Baker's fingers with the huge windup for the fingers that are going in my mouth. And, uh, you, may, and you make the legend of Britt Baker as a possible baby face or people that, that love her even more because... She survived the thumbtacks. Look at how hardcore she was. She's now, it's, it's Mick Foleying her a little bit. Yes. But then you have Hater, who I just think is not adding to the act in any meaningful way, um, especially since it doesn't seem like the plan is to have Hater turn on Baker. Um, and Rebel is entertaining and would be fine a la carte, uh, but the having two side goons diminishes baker it doesn't add to the act it was one thing when baker had a lackey goon who like was like a flunky who followed her around um who was like you know like the world's biggest Britt baker fan and Britt baker sort of like almost didn't care about her which is sort of what made it funny and cool um now it's like it hater I, I, like, I, it's subtraction by addition with hater is, is sort of my my final thought on that um abaddon for her part the act doesn't do anything for me, me um, but but if people like it, then this was not the right way to manage that act to keep people maximally intrigued and in seeing more Abaddon. I think I'll make this my final one, and I will give the floor to you after it because it's going to be fairly expansive. We can go over it. Halloween Havoc on Tuesday night. <laughs> All the belts changed except the big one is an interesting choice given that Braun Breaker is probably the most ready out of all the guys to take the big belt and see what you have. What is the point of beating him here? There isn't one. There isn't a point to beat him here if you have built him up this much. Other than to say, ah, oh, not quite ready. I, I, I just, I didn't get that. I thought, look, the women over-delivered on that ladder match but Zoe Stark was not ready for prime time that night. He, she was having an off night all, all night. Io Shirai being crazy going through that ladder was nuts. And, uh, and they've decided to now establish was a toxic attraction as a horseman like stable carrying both the uh, tag belts and Mandy, Mandy Rose now has the women's title in NXT. Interesting. We'll see how that works out for them. 
Uh, I feel a little bit bad for Dakota Kai because she will not be making main roster money anytime soon. And if any woman deserves it, it's her because she's been, she has been the boss of NXT's women's division for a long time. But I did like that they, they gave Kaylee Ray a bit of a rebirth on there. Other things I liked, I loved Imperium versus uh, MSK. I, I, I thought that was a nice, brutal little match with flippy do guys versus technical wrestlers in a way. I, I love Imperium. I'm hoping Walter shows up at some point. I thought he might show up during the main event and we'd, we'd, uh, we'd tease Tommaso and, and Walter, but we didn't. But overall, I felt, oh, and then we, and then we had the Gargano, uh, whatever the hell that was, which <laughs> times it was funny, times it was like pulling teeth. You, you, you didn't get anywhere. Oh, and, and, and the, uh, and the, and your favorite wrestler, Joe Gacy also made an appearance, which I'm sure, I'm sure you loved, but overall, I felt it was a disappointing night, even though they tried to do a lot. And maybe the point is they tried to do too much in terms of rebranding this thing, because the one thing that would have totally rebranded this is to put the new kid on top, Chris, any Halloween havoc thoughts. Yeah, um, it, it did feel like a show that was trying, um, but not necessarily in the good way um, I that, you know, we had our concerns about the ladder match going into it in that some of these participants are not necessarily people we thought were ready for this. Uh, I d- didn't see anything in Persia Parada that made me rethink nope. any of my takes. I, I had absolutely no second thoughts about her um, coming out of this. Zoe, I, I'm with you. Disappointing. Um I, I think she can do better though. Um, I don't. Oh I, yeah, no, yeah, but I, she. No, the, I mean, she was off from the beginning, and then yeah. was just off all night. Like the, uh, what was it? The uh, the the four fifty splash she was supposed to do on the ladder, or the or maybe it wasn't even a four fifty. Maybe it was just a three six or whatever. The splash she was supposed to do, and then she landed on her feet, and then just fell down. Like she was almost afraid to go all the way through the ladder. I mean, she slipped here and there. Uh, <laughs> although Braun Breaker slipped at the worst time during that title match that was just embarrassing but like but eo was doing her best to carry it i thought jc jane did okay in this match yeah I, i'm i'm still amazed that she's uh she's Alive. back yeah <laughs> right so i i don't know how much maybe it was sort of reconsidered uh, how much her involvement was reconsidered um uh malik blade they're sort of doing like a scrappy underdog jobber story with him it's kind of fun um they're doing leon ruff with him yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he, he's probably a better character or candidate for Leon Ruff, the Leon Ruff storyline. But you're right. They're absolutely doing that again. Um, I Roderick Strong and Odyssey Jones like they're trying with Odyssey Jones, but he has no character. Uh, he he's just the big smiley guy. I, like, I'm just oh, thinking of Malcolm Bivens, bro. There ain't no way you'll be <laughs> 205. Uh, yeah, oh. no, I, I mean, um, the the. The street fight, here's my thought on the Dakota Kai run-in. Okay, why didn't Toxic Attraction do that then? Why weren't they there the whole time for the street it's, fight? That's right, what I didn't get. Right. It, it, like, it, it, was, it, it sort of like begged the question. You can go, well, they were swooning in the back because of the title match. Like, they're heels. Like they, were they're get, the- they were getting treated for their injuries yeah. during the match. Okay, fine, show that. And that's the reason why yeah. we don't see them. And yeah. then we think we're not going to see them the rest of the night. That'd be, that would have been fine, I thought. Uh, you, you could have had Gigi Dolan like, roll her ankle or something, like fake roll her ankle when she's coming down with the belt and that's the way you explain it is that they're in the back getting dolan's ankle taped up and so dolan can't just like run yes. back out there and do something yes yeah Agreed. um uh imperium and msk uh really good um this field commentary was really interesting during this match because commentary was like when will msk get their due and then like msk well, yeah. well, no, the, the implication was, and, and kind of like, oh, there's someone we had to talk about, Mr. Cody Rhodes here still. Um, like, but there was this implication that like people weren't going along with the story of MSK. People didn't embrace MSK. People didn't really love MSK or whatever. Now, uh, is it because of the Izzy thing, you think, and her parents? Or because he, they were getting some booze in the crowd? or is, Yeah, because they've been getting... I mean, like, I don't think that they've ever really taken off. Um, And, like, yeah, they've been having some booze from the crowd. But they had booze from the crowd before the Izzy thing, too. Uh, yeah. Like, they I, they just... They don't seem to, like, have that, that kind of strong connection. Um, Braun Breaker, I, I saw a lot here I liked. Um, I just, like, they... You know, the guy's name 
His last name is B R E A K K E R. <clears throat> Breaker. Uh, like, I mean, it's just, it's not a champion's name. It's not a serious gimmick. And I, and, and people go like, what's in a name? I know it's very poetic or whatever, but like, I, I, in this case, it's the difference between being a champion and not being a champion, right? Like, like wh- the name, the name is the brand. Um, and the name is part of the character. Um, cause it's like a stage name. So like you, 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 you have to live into it. Like being Axl Rose matters. If like the guy who, who plays, who, who is Axl Rose and guns of roses all of a sudden, like changed his name to tuna loaf. Like this is not the same edgy band anymore. <laughs> Uh, uh, for me the moment on commentary that got me was uh all right dakota comes down in 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 the death mask or in you know in the grim reaper get up or whatever the hell that is you know phantom they hits her with a shovel and 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 it was either wade or uh or uh or 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 the play-by-play guy whose name i can't remember right now i go so much to break down here and i'm like she got hit with a shovel to break down <laughs> no no the, 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 there was a better one of those tonight on smackdown where uh we had oh there was like a bizarre promo um i, I want to say it was like was it was the jeff hardy promo or something we're coming out of like a, a bizarre backstage promo yeah um and pat mcafee goes wow there's a lot to talk about here and then michael co goes moving along uh I, I i like i i the way wwe processes trauma is is like really great like it, it it's i i like picturing a human processing trauma in the same way that wwe and is to the back. Does. that's yeah. what i want my, like when vince mcmahon dies i want him to have his funeral and then the automatically cut to the back that's what i want moving along moving along <laughs> as raw rolls on by the way recapping hour one vince mcmahon dead but here this, now we have Damian Priest versus Elias. This funeral continues. Uh, one, one of my favorite. The one, the other one thing I did laugh. There were a couple of good laughs in that Gargano thing, and Gargano's great as a comedian. Andre Chase dying in the haunted house made me laugh. I'm sorry it did. It was just it was the perfect this loser's hero. <laughs> He's gonna die type of thing. But overall, I could have I could have passed on this night. Uh, so I guess we can close then on the Cody promo. Yes, let's do that. Oh man, what did you make of this? I loved this promo. I did not bring it up before. I thought it got up to a it got out to a little bit of a clunky start, but what he was doing was he was addressing every single criticism of him on the internet, and it was fantastic. By the end, I thought I loved I, I love that he was like uh, he's like almost taking the crowd for a ride. He is he is so much more savvy and self-aware than people ever give him credit for. Like, I know you're booing me, but hear me out. And I loved the line about uh, they may sign the checks or whatever. But I, but remember the guy who helped build the bank. And I thought that was a nice setting the crowd straight of, hey. I might be a vice president, but you know what? I helped build this thing and I deserve the risk. I know you want to cheer Alistair Black. I thought at first it might be a little bit of a heel turn on Arn. I thought they might be going towards that because they lingered on that for a long time. But overall, I really liked this promo a lot. Dare I say loved it. I thought it, 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 it addressed a lot of the weaknesses in the story. And again, he says, I'm not turning which is a little fourth wall breaking for me. I get that. But at the same time, if he does eventually turn, then everything he said was a lie and he's perfect for that. But uh, why, what did you think? Um, I have like, uh, like complex feelings because okay. on one hand, Let's I work feel, these. yes, no, no. On one hand, Jeff, I feel as you do. I, I feel as you do that. Uh, Cody Rhodes did a really nice job going out with a number of different points that he had to hit, going through all those different points, doing it in a way where it didn't seem like he was stopping and thinking about stuff. It felt after he got, as you said, after he got off the blocks, it felt good and flowing and like it it hit a momentum, you know, bringing up Dustin, being self-effacing, being humble and all these sorts of things. 
Um, the line that I have just been like kind of really preoccupied with here is the I'm not turning like the I'm not turning heel line actually saying that out loud. Um, as I initially I was like, I said, as you did, that if he does eventually turn heel, that's exactly what a heel would say, except that like, no, a heel wouldn't say that. A heel would just be a dick. A heel in a wrestling program doesn't go, I'm a heel. And yeah. he, well, okay, Dick Dastardly says I'm I'm a villain, right? But like um it, it, but There like, are guys hold on, there are guys that revel in being bad guys. Totally yes. entered in the eighties. You know, Anderson, the the horsemen reveled in being the baddest guys on the block. But on the other hand, they don't really different. go out there, they don't go out there and they say we're the bad guys in our life type of yeah, thing. Well, yeah, right. Well, the, the, in their own minds, they're still the heroes they're in still their the own They're still the heroes story. of the story. They're, they're guys who are fighting against the oppression of dusty roads. And a heel, especially someone who would actually self-identify as a heel, is I, is saying in this story of life, I am a villain, yeah. which is a very like weird meta thing to say. And this is why, like beyond the... like. Beyond the, it's weird to read a short story where like the main character goes, "My name's Bill. I'm the main character." Uh, <laughs> like, 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 you know, like that's weird. Uh, my name's Tom. I'm the villain who hates Bill. Like, like you establish that through doing. Um, and so to your point about like the horseman, about Arne Anderson, I'm a bad man. That sort of stuff. I'm a bad man. Um, in, in your head, you're like, I'm dangerous. Yeah, I'm a bad dude, but like, you know, you're bad. I'm, I'll do unscrupulous things, but like I'm a bad man also implies I'm a winner. Whereas Cody's basically like saying, I'm not gonna, it, it, it just, it was like one step beyond. So for me, like, even if he does turn heel on the back end of this, it won't be satisfying. And as a baby face, I just like, yeah, I'm on board with him, but like, I, I felt it kind of obnoxious for him at the it end felt the, a little obnoxious no sometimes. go along because he, he said like go along with the story and i'm like you know what screw you buddy stop <laughs> telling a story that doesn't work stop telling a story that is bagging it up for weeks and weeks here's an idea mr vice president mr the bank mr moneymaker change the direction you have the pen, dude. Like, fix it. Um, if, if if Aleister Black is getting cheered and you're getting booed, and Aleister Black, people want him to be a babyface and maybe get like a serious singles push, then facilitate that, Mister the Bank. Um, like, you know, I I actually think you know saying that you're the bank. Um, and you're not just a vice president actually puts your agency at a higher level and <laughs> your ought to know better factor at a higher level. You're making me reconsider my gushing. That's, that's kind of scary. What do you think of uh, Andrade's response? Um, you know, Andrade, the complaint on him back in WWE is that he wasn't knuckling down and learning the English well enough to be given a microphone on some of their bigger television products. And I, I really just don't know where that's coming from. I loved the shot at the tattoo. <laughs> you know, hey, people hate me too. I just don't care. I look, look when I was finally was when I was finally able to understand him and like like yeah, I have to like there's a buffering time yes, in yes. my head whenever Andrade comes out. And, and I actually like okay, to stop being glib about this obvious weakness in his performance, right? Um it, but it's like a real one and like he's had years to work on it, so at this point I don't actually really feel all that bad about pummeling on it cuz like you're being you're given like a paragraph and a half to go out and do just like you know diction matters right um I, I think that andrade coming out only actually hindered cody's work here to try to make himself a baby face because andrade's being a heel but he's being one of those cool heels that people like and the shot about the neck tattoo is the thing that cody like will never say yes yeah, this, this thing yikes uh, what was i thinking guys um like uh, like he does occasionally but he doesn't really believe it um and so like Andrade getting a leg up on that only I think it, it, it kind of hit Cody at a vulnerable point the thing that's working the most here to keep Cody on the baby face side of the leverage ledger just like we were talking about last week right now is pack and, and I think the 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 only smart thing that's going on right now is the pack is tagging with Cody next week and they're not going to boo pack out of the building I will add one other smart thing that they have done or not done actually and that is they have not dropped Ric Flair's name in any Andrade promo, and they have not dropped the flair name in any Andrade promo connecting him to Charlotte or anything to that effect. 
because he, there's, here's the, the thing though there is a temptation to make this flair roads again i, I could oh. go the other way on that though jeff okay. um the rick flair is so toxic right now that cody Rhodes beating up a like, like the people in the aew fan base who don't like rick flair um and probably like you know flair hasn't been doing himself any favors in the intervening weeks since the dark side of the ring uh thing aired here um would have went nuclear on andrade and started booing him and it would have strengthened the cheering for cody and cody's at such a fragile point right now you, you, like is that cheap heat yeah yeah i'd do it Look, okay. look, look again because you know uh, the, these people jeff they're they're just too stupid to go along <laughs> with the story that cody is trying to tell them okay fair enough your point is duly noted uh your turn if you have anything on the river um nxt uk <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh if you bring up isla dawn i'll hurt you no, I, I just want to mention Charlie Dempsey right quick. Um, okay. I think I think Charlie Dempsey's good. Uh, I, He's very I, good. I, yeah, I, I say I saw a lot. Then again, and, so and, is that other kid that they've done nothing with too. Uh, uh, the guy they changed his name. Um, oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, for, I, I yes, I know. He's he is. I've he's, already forgotten his name. Yes. I, I I know. I know. That's supposed to help. Me. And I also I I do want to note Josh Morell and Danny Jones are like my like two favorite enhancement guys in all of wrestling. That really? they're just, they're great. They 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 are like they they have enough talent to actually like do some offense and take some offense and like offer an enhancement match that helps bet it, it, it's more than just like a piece of paper that the, the the heel or whoever is knocking over um and i think there's a bit of an art to having that kind of match okay. where where you you get some offense in but never so much that like people go like well maybe i should care about josh morell more than charlie dempsey here um, or, or Dan, Danny Jones more than Charlie Dempsey here, but like I thought, like the Jack Stars in both of them too. The yeah, guys. right. And uh, yeah, and, and Jacks uh, NXT UK really has like a spoils of I. I this is like a weird skill set to have, but like these like quality enhancement match guys and stars. Wild um, Boar used Josie. to be that too when he was still yeah. with them. Uh, Mike Hitchman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll bring up the other. I mean the 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 no, notable I guess you could call it thing is a new NXT Heritage Cup champion Noam Dar beating Tyler Bate with the I hate this spot because it's it's overused too much the the in the middle of a brawl with Pretty Deadly Trent Seven's towel goes flying into the ring and makes it look like he threw in the towel for his friend meh beat him or don't don't do that stuff. But uh, well, and the official just looks like a jackass. Yes. Like, like, like you know, uh, I mean, if you're going to have that like that, then the announcing team has to get over on commentary. The idea that the rules for Heritage Cup are very clear. Yes. That if the towel leaves the manager's hand during the course of a submission hold, that the referee is to register that in all circumstances as a concession. Mm -hmm. And so the reason that that is being called like that and that the referee is bound to call it like that is that when the towel entered the ring at that time, Tyler Bate was in a submission hold. Um, like it basically like if it had happened at another point, like where there's just like, you know, like Tyler Bate goes off the ropes and in comes a towel. Like the referee has the discretion to, you know, not do that. However, discretion is taken away from the referee in this circumstance. It becomes binary. Is there a towel in the ring during the, that would be the way you explain that away. Um, they, they didn't do a good job on that. I, I mean, I thought the whole spot was convoluted. I, I there was not real lingering between, bait and trent seven not that i wanted that not that i want tension between them so like that's that's another problem with this uh yeah i it, it's it's nothing nothing to write home about nothing to write home about yeah close up the lazy river there we thank you all for listening we thank my bookie for sponsoring us use code ropes get up to double your deposit bet against glover to shara it's easy money <laughs> Uh, you can follow me at crap game 13 DMS are open. As I said, in the beginning of the, uh, show, you can follow Chris at DWATG. You can just follow the show at 
Shake Them Ropes, all one word. We are part of the Voices of Wrestling Network. We thank you for listening. If you like wrestling, if you like something a little bit more obscure, plenty of Japanese shows like Open the Voice Gate. There is, uh, we have a Dynamite show on the network as well, hosted by uh, Aaron Bentley over there. It's very good. Music of the Mat with one friend of the show, Andrew Price. I believe I got that correct. Uh, Chris also has other endeavors that he likes to do. He's going to tell you about those endeavors now. Yeah. So really the big thing, I'm going to plug the podcast, but like if you're in the market for music lessons, whether it's guitar, bass, <laughs> piano, no, like for real, no, like, sorry, I've messed up Andrew's name. It's Andrew rich, Jesus Andrew rich. Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. He does music of the mat. It's a great yes. program. You can listen to it on the voice of the wrestling podcasting yeah. network. Uh, you know, he can have me on cause I do music, which you can get music yes. lessons from me. Um, feel free to hit me up at DWATG. Um, you, know, you can reach out to Jeff and get my contact info. There's a number of ways to do that. Um, if you're a Voice of Wrestling friend, I will give you a $5 per lesson discount. Uh, the Voice of Wrestling friend rate. Uh, guitar, bass, drums, piano, music production. You want to learn it. Listen to the theme song to this show. I, I did that. So, like, if you thought that was that was a few years ago, too. Like, four years ago now. Um, so, if you thought that was good. Uh, just just wait till you get lessons from me. No, like, they're good lessons. I do good lessons. Um, so, you can get those. Uh, don't worry about the government's my music or my uh, news show. Uh, you can find that at don'tworry.tv. It's on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, patreon.com slash DWATG. I had Bruce Carlson on. We talked about things. I'm going to tape another episode, but I was actually making music. You can get music lessons from me, Jeff. Did you know that? You can get music lessons. I teach music. I was staring at Rich Krejci's name. And I called Andrew. <laughs> Andrew Price for some reason. I don't understand that. I'm sorry, Andrew. Is Andrew Rich? He hosts Music of the Mat. Go listen to it. I See teach ya. music. He teaches music. <laughs>